Welcome to our Forex Basic Education course. In this course, you're going to learn the basic fundamentals of trading in the foreign exchange. We're going to teach you about price movement, the importance of time, separation of different currency pairs, the correlation with different currency pairs, and much more. First, we're going to give you a few simple rules that you're going to apply along with our methodology over the next two weeks. We recommend you use a practice account for the next two weeks to follow our methodology along with our alerts and explanations on why we enter in specific trades. Before we continue, it is very important to know the risks behind trading in the foreign exchange. Please read the risk disclaimer before we continue. First, we need to familiarize ourselves with candlestick charts and the different time frame we can use while we're trading in the foreign exchange. First, I would like to go over the definition of candlesticks. A candlestick is the style of bar chart used primarily to describe price movement. Now understand this is very important. All we're going to concentrate on is the price movement of candlesticks. We're not going to worry about different formations. We're not going to worry about different patterns. All we would like to know is the price movement. Now on the bottom it says each bar represents the range of price movement over a given time interval. That's all we need you to focus on. For now, all you're going to concentrate is on the price and the amount of time it took, depending on the time frame that we're using, for a candle to form itself and the price to move from a certain time to a certain time. Now allow me to give you an example. Here we have a Euro USD 5 minute chart. Take a look on the left hand side. We have a candlestick in green. Now I want you to look to the right. The price was 123.04 and it moved to the top 123.14. That's a difference of 10 pips in this one 5 minute candle. Because I'm using a 5 minute chart, Obviously, each candle represents five minutes of information. In this case, five minutes of price movement from 1210 to 1215. Now, we're going to be basing a lot of our information using a five minute chart. We're going to give you a few examples on the difference between a five minute chart and a one hour chart. As we mentioned before, the only difference if you're looking at a five minute chart and a one hour chart, the price, depending on the time, it's going to be exactly the same to the right. But when you look at the candlesticks and the difference between a Euro USD as we have in this chart, take a look to the right. Here's one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock, and so on. Each candle represents one hour worth of information or price movement. Here you can see that from a certain time at one o'clock, the price movement dropped. At two o'clock, for that single hour, the price movement moved lower. And then at three, within an hour's time, the price movement moved up before coming back down. The reason we use shorter time frames, as you can see here on a five minute chart, you can see the difference between one and 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We simply have more candles giving us an idea of the price movement in between the trading session that we're trading. We want more information. We want more of a visual in order for us to understand what the price movement has been doing for our entries and to define the trend of the market. So for now, simply focus on the price movement and most of the examples that we're going to give you are going to be based on a five minute time frame. As part of our methodology, our second step is extremely important and happens to be the foundation of this education. It is very important to learn how to separate or the reasons why we separate the three different sessions of the day. We have the European session, the US session, and the Japanese session. Allow me to show you the separation of all three. Here we have the Japanese session which starts at 8 p.m. New York time to 2 a.m. New York time. The European session starts from 2 in the morning to 7 in the morning. New York time and the US session starts from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. New York time. Now you're probably asking yourself why is it important to separate each session? 
Allow me to give you an example. Here we have a basic chart of the British pound US dollar during the Japanese session. I want you to focus on the lower part of this chart, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. And I want you to take a look at the price. The price here was 148.05. As time went on, the price moved from 148.05 to 148.74. And as we reach the end of the Japanese session, take a look at the price, how it moved from 148.05 to 149.37. This is a beautiful uptrend during the Japanese session. This is what our chart looks like towards the end of a session. You can't see to the right because that's the future. But many traders use past performance to try to predict what the future price movement will be. Now any beginner, if you take a look at this chart and you ask him to place an order, whether to buy or to sell, those are the only two choices we have. Most likely than not, they will say we would like to place a buy order. Why? Because we've seen in the past the price movement move from 148.05 all the way to 149.37. Common sense, we wouldn't want to sell this currency pair. We would want to buy because we've just come off of a very important session and we've seen the price movement going up. We have no idea what's about to happen in the future, but our best bet is to place a buy order. Now allow me to show you in this next example. Here we see the new session, which is the European session, and the price movement has gone down from 149.27 all the way down to 148.35, almost down 100 pips. This is the reason why we separate each trading session of the day. When the Japanese market opens, we have different investors, different companies, different banks that are making different transactions every single day. If we separate each session, for example, the Japanese session, as we saw the trend moving higher, we decided to buy, and towards the end of the Japanese session, we stopped trading, took in whatever profit we had, and allowed the European session to start and gave the market enough time to develop before we thought about placing any more trades. Our success ratio would probably be a lot better than just trying to anticipate the price movement or guessing, as you've seen in this example, if we would have bought based on the Japanese session and the information of the price movement, we would have been wrong. So it's very important for us to separate each session. We're not trying to guess the price movement. We're trying to make an intelligent decision based on the price movement before we decide to buy or sell a currency pair. And this is why this is the foundation of our course. We must separate and give the market time before we start thinking about placing any orders. Which brings us to our next example. Step three is trend recognition. Before we can decide to place any trades, we must have an idea of the direction of the market. But first, in order for us to understand the direction of the market, we have to have a starting point. As we mentioned before, we have three different sessions. We have the Japanese session, we have the European session, and we have the US session. Here we have the British pound, which you can see on the bottom, 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. This is the start of the European session. And we have a starting price. The starting price at 2 in the morning will be used as a reference point. This will be our starting point to determine whether the price movement is moving higher or if the price movement is moving lower, therefore giving us an idea of the direction of the market. Now take a look at the price. Here we can see the price was at 149.30. And towards the end of the European session, the price moved lower to 148.30 giving us an idea of the price movement or the trend being down. In this step, we must have a starting point, and that starting point will be the first candle or the open price for the session that we're trading. If you're trading the Japanese session, you will take the open price at 8 p.m. New York time. If you're trading the European session, you will take the open price at 2 a.m. New York time. If you're trading the U.S. session, you will take the open price for 7 a.m. New York time.
Our second step in understanding how to determine the trend in the market, we must give the market at least two hours before we think about placing any trades. You're probably asking yourself, why two hours? It's to give the market time to develop. Time is a very important factor when we're trading, especially in the foreign exchange. Allow me to give you an example. In this chart, we have the British pound US dollar, five minutes, and take a look at what happened during the previous session. We had a downtrend. This line represents seven o'clock in the morning, New York time. As you can see, the open price was 148.95. And we gave the market two hours worth of time to allow it to develop itself. And towards the end of the two hours, you can see the price movement move from 148.95 to 149.60, therefore giving us a better idea of the direction of the market. Take a look at the left. On the left side, you can clearly see that the trend was down for the European session. And during the US session, the trend changed. This is the reason we must allow the market to develop before we think about placing any orders, whether it be buy orders or sell orders. The third step for trend recognition is the price movement from the starting price. Now, take a look here on the left hand side. We have the starting price of 148.50. And you can see clearly the trend was moving lower. It moved to 148.07. But it wasn't two hours just yet. The price movement started going up. By 9.05 in the morning, the price was at 148.49 from the open price of 148.50. Even though the trend seemed to be moving lower towards the first hour worth of trading, towards the second hour, we can see that the price movement started going back up. It's not a good idea to start placing sell orders or buy orders when we have the open price and the price after two hours almost at the same level. We want the price movement to be further away from the starting price by at least 40 to 50 points on the pound, anywhere between 35 to 40 pips on the euro. This is a perfect example of why we have to be patient when we're trading. If we see the price movement moving in one direction as we see here, and towards the next hour, we see the price movement moving back to the same level of the open price, we should be patient and hold off on trading until we see a clearer entry point or a clearer picture of the trend moving in one direction or the other. Allow me to give you another example. Here we can see the European session, the open price for the US session at 148.90. And take a look at the price movement. After two hours, it moved higher to 149.58. This is what we look for when we're looking to determine the direction of the market. As you can see, the open price of 148.90 and the end price after two hours is 149.58. It's more than 60 pips on an uptrend, giving us a good idea of the direction of the market and giving us more reassurance for us to place buy orders. So on step three, we must allow the price to move away from the open price of the start of the session that you're trading. And if you're giving the market two hours to develop, then that price should be further away by at least 40 to 50 pips on the pound and at least 35 to 40 pips on the euro.